Okay, so we all believe that people can be duped, right? And what, what is the Christian explanation for Muslims believing what they believe? What is the Muslim explanation for Christians believing what they believe? Well, the explanation generally is, well, you know, they believe the wrong thing, but we believe the right thing. Isn't it interesting that, like, you know, we, we each conclude, okay, one, one of the religions has to have the truth, or at least, you know, more truth than anybody else. Um, which I can at least go for that second view of, okay, you know, they can't all be exactly equal. One would be slightly better than the other, and I have to like Christianity myself. Um, but at the same time, I can't say I know a whole lot of Buddhists and Hindus and other things from points of comparison. So, uh, gee. Um, but, uh, but, um... We all believe that one of the religions uh, is better than all the others. And by and large, we all keep to the religion we were raised in. Isn't a coincidence that everyone just happens to be raised to be, be of the religion that happens to be right? Christians are like, wow, I'm glad I was born into a Christian family, learned all these great Christian values, and the Muslims are like, wow, I'm glad I was born into this Muslim family, I learned all these mu but Jewish people are like, you know, ah, I'm born in this Jewish family, I learned this Jewish... And by and large, everyone has their own opinions, of course, can change religions or, or whatever. I guess there are very few people born atheists, but simply because there are, you know, few atheists in the world. Um, but everyone kind of keeps whatever it is you you were raised with. Well, there must be something wrong with the going with whatever you were raised with idea, because we can't all have been raised in the right religion. We're all in different religions and we all disagree with each other. So who's wrong? Maybe we're all kind of wrong, and all. Here's the thing, uh, that uh, neither the, the the atheists nor the theist, theist being you believe in some sort of god, that neither group really acknowledges or really talks about the idea that hey guys, maybe religion is partially right. Maybe some of this is true, or somewhat true, or, or something, and not all of it. The atheists. As far as I'm aware, I like to just say, no, it's all bunk. And, of course, the, at least the fundamentalist type people on the religious side say, no, it's all absolutely true. Um, the absolute truth thing gets tricky. You know, I, I've come to believe, and this is hard, because, like, I, I've, you know, I've been to church and everything growing up. And for a while, um, I was I was just kind of went, and I was, you know, had this vague idea about God. And then later, uh, I got into this youth group we had. And we had an amazing uh, youth group uh, pastor who, who really made this all real. He knew not just like, just like read off from the Bible and stuff, but we also we talked to each other like real people. You know, we, we had fun and we had we developed friendship. We you know, and this is all connected to you know, the idea of God. And people talked quite quite seriously. You know, not seriously sort of like you know firm and serious. No, seriously like like I'm really interested. Like I really care about what God wants and, 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 and how we ought to live our lives the God way. And this this meant a lot to me, you see. Uh, this really this really started up ideas in me of living in a moral way and by and large it's worked out rather well. I mean, I'm not really perfect, but like, you know, uh, I think there have been a, a, a lot of um, a lot of bad decisions I, I could have or would have made had it not been for this instruction received uh, in church or in the church environment. Now, church environment instruction can be stupid sometimes. They just, they just like just just say it. Blah, 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 blah. Just do what I said because I said so. It was in my youth group thing that we talked, and it, it, you could you could find the reality of ideas. Um, but I mention all that, right? Because if I use the words biblical errancy as opposed to inerrancy, inerrancy means it is perfect. Errancy would mean, therefore, it is not perfect. If I say that, am I distancing myself from my old, uh, you know, the, the youth group, for instance, or the, you know, 
I just also not even necessarily the youth, but just all sorts of you know religious type people I've had and, and, and connections we made within the context of religion and oftentimes the Bible and a lot of people I know, you know, back in back in the day and here at college. Well not at college right now, whatever. Um and, and all this stuff. A lot of people, um have kind of a different opinion on this. And I don't want to. This test thing with religion, because um, religion is supposed to be is supposed to be above all. You know, you're supposed to follow your religion more so than anything else. And so, this puts me in a strange situation where if I'm questioning religion, am I am I, am I, am I like just overthrowing everyone? Am I? I'm not. But I've said the words already that uh, I was building up to this errancy, biblical errancy. I don't. I think the Bible's a great book. It's up millions of people. But I can't. Really, it's 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 absolutely perfect. And there are weird things going on here. There's you know the how do we know the Bible's perfect? And people are like, well, the Bible said so. You know, it's just in this verse here. Oh, all all scripture is God breathed or something like that. I'm like, I'm like, okay. What if that part is the imperfect part? What if you know when the Bible says it's perfect? It's it's not perfect when it says that it's perfect. Like if I walk down the street and say, I'm perfect, like, no you're not. I just said I was perfect. Yeah, but that's because you were being an idiot. <laughs> you know. Uh, that's because you, you were you were being false. Not necessarily lying, but you were, you know you're not actually perfect. <laughs> um But saying that the Bible is imperfect makes a lot more things make sense because you can always find a couple of things here and there. This is thing like I, I love. I have you know another a group thing uh, at college and talking to people on uh, in Christian terms and stuff, uh, and that's still to this day very very beneficial. Um, where it gets kind of weird is when it gets into exact discussions. It gets into you know. So I found this. Uh, verse in like Job or something which mentions the Leviathan and I think that might be a dinosaur it's to somebody else okay. this is an attempt to reconcile the existence of dinosaur fossils with the idea that the earth is approximately 6,000 years old I don't think it says that anywhere directly in the Bible but some guy made all these calculations and, you know, based on based on the word okay uh well, I, I kind of believe in science. <laughs> the science says it's pretty dang conclusive that um, evolution, which, you know, by my mind is okay. I say, fine. God created evolution. Works for me. Like, well, that would, that would mean the Adam and Eve story isn't exactly as it say. I mean, we made the earth in six days and rested on the seventh. I'm like, okay. So maybe whoever wrote that down got this math wrong. <laughs> Maybe it was, you know, 13.7 billion years. <laughs> that isn't that the fact 13.7? I don't know the exact. Um, you know, maybe whatever it was. How much does it matter? Uh, but this is the thing where it gets weird. It gets into, you know, exact things of, you know, and then, and then we get a, it might affect questions of philosophy, you know. It's my philosophy that uh, good does not depend on evil. That would be ridiculous. Um, say you have to go through some pain. On it. No, you don't have to. Technically, oftentimes you do because you know of the various choices you can think of. Even the best one involves some pain. Fine, but it's worth it in the end. Um, technically, there's an even better choice, and even better, and even better, and better. And if you were perfect, you would know the absolute choice and involved pain. Now, some people will counter that and say, oh, well, in Job, it's, a, you know, God puts um, Job through all this crap, you know, and, um, and um, so therefore God sometimes tests us, sometimes causes evil things to happen to us. People sort of wedge this in as explanations for various evil things, like, you know, why does evil happen? At least we acknowledge there's a question involved there as to why good things, or why bad things happen to good people. I suppose good things happen to bad people is also nothing. Um, etc. 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 Now they bring up the Job thing. And I'm like thinking to myself, I don't necessarily believe that the Job story happened. 